Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier and this is Calling All Minions. This is where I pose as one of the developers and answer questions using logic, common sense, and previous comments made by CIG, which people sometimes aren't always aware of. And with that being said, let's begin. Whoa! Okay. And with that, be, that being said, let's begin. <laughs> Vadran Malik asks, Truck stop cities and spaceships, a request for rapid deployment. <laughs> yeah, you and everybody else seem to want this. Um, I love big cities. I do agree that it should be a little harder to leave the city as in real life. However, most people that I know do not ever choose to live rest in a city because they would like to get their get to their ship faster so i have some general questions and maybe a dev will throw an answer or two my way um no but i will um if i had my choice of place to log in and out it would be a truck stop and before anybody says that truck stops don't have hotels okay so we get where this guy's going with this okay once again i'm poorly informed um one of the things that they hinted at when they were talking about um, the planet R Corp, and this was something that Chris Roberts was talking about, is that as people were flying into R Corp, they were noticing that they were seeing the markers for landing pads on all kinds of different buildings, right? And so CIG's grand plan in the future is that you're going to have a landing pad like at your building, like you're going to have a condo, you're going to have your own personal living space wherever you choose to live and that may in this case come with a landing pad so chances are you know orgs are going to be able to build their own locations their own sites obviously and that's going to include landing pads so a lot of this stuff is actually going to be resolved in the game so you're going to have your own landing pad so you won't have to go to Lorville and say oh shit now i got to get on that stupid train and go all the way into town and then go up all these different tunnels and then make a right turn though go request my ship now you'll just have your own landing pad like if you remember all the way back to when we used to really use our personal hangers remember those things they're actually still in the game um that is going to be kind of what it's going to be like for us in the future not right now not in the near future but that's where it's going to go so you will be able to live in the city and you will probably have your own house in the city whether it's included with the game or maybe it's something that you get a basic condo with a basic little landing pad and then later on in your character's life maybe you can buy a whole office tower and just kind of like stark towers it or you know avengers tower it and have your own launch launch bay out of there where you and your team of exotic heroes can fight the forces of evil from sounds pretty cool Anyways, moving on. Let's see. All right, Sora1 asks, Defender planned synergy with Merchantmen. What is pl the planned synergy that the dev teams have planned for the Defender with the Merchantmen? I understand that the Merchantman isn't in production, but with the Defender nearing completion in 3.6, hopefully, um, but has nearing completion, but has the synergy been planned? Thank you for any help. Um, CIG has deftly avoided this. Um, it it could be one of the reasons that the Defender didn't really make it into 3.5, maybe. At some point, somebody said, hey, you know what? What about that synergy with the merchantman? Ooh, shit, we better think about that. We might, might want to take a second look at some other stuff, too. Um, they really haven't narrowed that down. Uh, players have been open to a lot of different ideas. Some people have talked about just like a fueling mechanism that allows it to refuel the defender so they can keep up with it. But with this new heat issue involving the limitation of quantum jumping, that could create an even bigger problem unless they plan to have the merchantmen have a launch bay that carries multiple defenders or they might just have to drop the whole idea altogether but it's just one of those things that 
happens when a poorly thought out idea gets said out loud. So we'll have to wait and see. Building the verse. Von L asks, building the verse. I had a look at the Arc Star map last night and was thrilled how big the verse is, but it also got me thinking about how long developers plan to spend building it. You and everybody else. <laughs> One patch every three months has been put out there, but devs can't be planning to release add one star system per patch because that would mean all the verse will not be in sync with the original plan until the year 2045. <laughs> oh no, not reality. Even doing two systems per three months will get us to... <laughs> I love that you did the math. I love that you did the math. Just let me say that, Von L. I love that you did the math. Will get us to 2033 before the verse is done. I'm sure this has been planned and decided on and that I just missed the information. So what? So what's the plan here, devs? Will there be options to join certain servers for groups of systems before s server meshing is done? And what can we expect? And I guess maybe when can we expect the verse to be done? Okay, so when is the verse going to be done? I don't know. You have to... Cons can, uh, you know, you'd have to consult the Oracle. I would say that you are probably not going to see us even being in beta, which is kind of considered the soft launch of Star Citizen at some point in beta where they have server meshing, they have persistence, and they have all the systems built into the game. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect to see that for another two and a half years. And that's just big TBH. Um, that's me being flat out honest with you. If it came in before that, fantastic. But if I were forced to put money on the table, I would not bet on it within two and a half years. Um, how do they plan to tackle all these problems? Well, how they plan to tackle it, will it work? Um, generally, the plan is, is that they're developing the systems to allow them to procedurally regenerate all the different worlds and all the different systems. So they'll take Stanton, they'll change it around, and they'll say, okay, now it's this system, now it's Terra, now it's Earth or the Sol system. And they'll just move things around and then all the missions, all the you know, all the different uh, stations and all that are just kinda kind of procedurally just magically appear all the content and then of course players will fill that out with their own you know orgs and their bases and all this stuff whoops i hit the mic sorry um that's how that's going to work that's what their plan is to kind of procedurally fill most of it out and then of course they'll put in their own mission givers and things like that will it work at the level of fidelity that they're trying to do things um I don't think so. Uh, I think it's going to take a lot longer to complete things the way they're going. I think that, truth be told, um, in terms of mission givers and things like that, things are going to be sparse after the set of mission givers that they recorded back in 2015 run out. They're not going to be able to keep up with it because you know you can't just come out with one mission giver per solar system per year i mean they're gonna have to complete multiple star systems a year in order to fill out that star map and to get everything out there and realistically i don't see how they're going to do it um even if they can do five solar systems a year it's it's still going to be a huge challenge for them to get all of this done and i'm not really sure that they can really make it. Um, I think that you're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of systems slowly become the oh yeah no that's not happening anymore system. They're going to have to kind of cut back on their vision of how many star systems that they were going to have. Um, how far I don't know, but you're probably going to see that get roped in sometime in the next two years. Then they're going to say look. I know we said 150, now it's just 100. Now it's probably just going to be 20 to 30 systems. M maybe even not even that. Maybe 15. 
and then they'll say, well, we'll, we'll add more systems over time. But at launch, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we only have five or six systems, if we even have, if we even have that. Sato asks, typo, question mark? Not a major one, but I figured I'm, you might want to fix that. Espera Prowler. I mean, out of the myriad of things that you could point out right now that could use a fix or use a touch-up, this is where you went. Amazing. Magic of the internet, everybody. Magic of the internet. Game glass allowed. Uh, Wilfred Von Halen asks, oh, there will be applications like game glass that uses information from the ship HUD and displays it in a tablet. Allowed or will it be banned? It'll be allowed. This is the, you know, why would they ban it? Uh, they probably need it, considering how shit the MFDs are <laughs> to, to interact with. Maybe, of course, a tablet would be easier as long as you could make it work. I don't think that they're going to directly support it in terms of, oh, are you having an issue with your game glass? Well, let CIG step in. No, they'll leave it to game glass. They want to step in front of that train. They can catch it. Um, but, yeah, uh, of course. Why wouldn't they allow it? Silly question, Van Halen. Silly question. Fenrir asks, Law System, ability to surrender. Will players have the ability to surrender to law enforcement NPCs, bounty hunters, or players in order to avoid death? Hmm, probably. I mean, at some point when things get a little bit more sophisticated, they'll probably try to use non-lethal methods to capture you until you get to a certain point or a certain wanted level. And then they'll just be like kill on sight. So there'll probably be a scaling uh, severity of capture system that goes along with it in the future. Though, has that been expressly stated? Not yet, but it's a very good point and a very good idea. Or at least not that I can recall that they've ever stated that. Oh, of course. Firehammer. Helmet HUD designs. When the final version of the game is released, will the helmets each have HUDs that are unique to them? No, the HUDs are going to be unique to the ship manufacturers. Uh, the hope is is that, you know, for CIG, it's like Drake is green and uh, Misk and so-and-so are blue. Wait, Misk and which was the other one that's blue? I know Aegis and Anvil are green as well. But whatever, doesn't matter. Um, the helmets are the HUDs are going to be unique to the ship manufacturer, not to the helmet. And finally, our last question, Gerard, or maybe Gerard, um, cockpit buttons made just for visual. Yes, I see a lot of buttons just a minor. Just a mirror of the of the other ones. Are the cockpit buttons there only for show? Yes, they are. Um, are they being made without purpose? Yes, they are. Any plans for cockpit buttons having purpose and being placed with a logic behind it? No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. No, no, no. It's just because it, it looks like um, Wing Commander and Privateer. And, you know, because it works so well in the 90s, clearly... It will work now. Um, it's there's there's a lot of issues with making the cockpit buttons functional because it really means that you have to go in depth into every cockpit, and I mean you really have to start to think about how this cockpit works and why is this here and why is this there. I mean you might often hear in documentaries uh, P fifty one pilots talking about how they could reach around and fumble and. Or not fumble, but you know, adjust the various components of their P-51 Mustang without even having to look at them. Everything was in the right logical place. 
CIG is big on doing things for show, but not really doing things for, um, like for practical reasons, you know, it's, it's more, it's more about the show and not so much about, um, the real kind of, you know, thought, thought through design where it's like, oh, obviously this should be here and that should be there. And, you know, maybe we should have these buttons over here clustered with those. It's more just like, okay, here's a spot that's far away from this other spot because, you know, how you got to kind of navigate through the menus and everything has to be spaced apart a certain space. And even when you're in combat, are you going to reach down, zoom, zoom in and just kind of navigate these menus? Of course not. If you were really in combat, you the buttons that you would be using would probably be the buttons on your joystick and HOTAS, much like in real life. And you wouldn't be worried about those MFDs as much as you would be about, you know, maintaining situational awareness and knowing what's going on around you. So, yeah, you're probably never going to see all these buttons integrated. And to be quite frank, any work to do that would just be a waste of time because, you know, who's going to use them? Really, I mean, who uses their mouse to click on these buttons once you've got the quick keys just bound to your HOTAS or your, um, you know, or your keyboard or your mouse? One of those things. You, I mean, you don't really zoom in and go like, okay, got to push the button here. Got to push the button there. Nobody really does that anymore. So, and it's not really something that's efficient during combat or even during the regular operation of your ship. And to a certain degree you eventually just go ah, this is so annoying I'm just going to figure out what the the quick key is for it and just turn it on and turn it off because I don't want to bother with that anymore so they could do something like that but it would just be an, an enormous waste of time one more one more Rarera asks, ask the devs, this is an honest and genuine question, not a troll post. I love it already. Uh, let me proceed this by saying the info from the community is always as appreciated as well. You're welcome. But why does everyone but the devs respond in the <laughs> forum category? <laughs> um, uh, do you want a real answer or do you want me to troll you? Uh, <laughs> the reason why you probably won't see that many dev answers is um, the same reason why you don't see calling all devs anymore. It's It takes time. One thing, it does take time. And I think that everyone would agree that we would rather have the devs working on the game than fighting forum wars. And the truth is, is that you know, even with this whole paper thin comment recently, which turned into a whole thing, um, we would rather have our devs working on the game than working on, you know, trying to fight forum wars. And truth be told, sometimes the devs will say things in the forums that directly contradict something that someone else from CIG said. And they're probably worried about kind of getting hung by their own comments. And the truth is, is that it does happen um, sometimes that where devs will kind of say something in the forums or say something in a video broadcast or whatever, that really just doesn't make any sense. And or they'll post something and it's just like, what? When when did this become a thing? I mean... You can see the Q&A that I was looking at that almost became this episode right now. Um, so that's probably why you see a lot of devs are kind of reluctant to kind of engage with the community. And I think a part of the reason is the same reason why a lot of the members of the community uh, refuse to engage with the community. Because there's a lot of people out there um, who really who have meaningful things to say, important things to say, good information, nice insights to have. There's a lot of people out there. But within the Star Citizen community, there's basically three groups, okay? Now, I would say, I would guess that the largest group is the players who 
genuinely like Star Citizen, who realize what Star Citizen represents to gaming in general and want this game to succeed, I myself am included in that group. Um, then there's two other groups. They're, they're, they're kind of like really heavy duty fringe elements. Um, there's the hyper, I love you, Chris Roberts, and I would love to get an anime Chris Roberts body pillow for no reason in particular group that will, if anyone even says, you know, I'm not really sure about what they did here, that will just slam and slander you relentlessly for asking a question or questioning whether this is the right approach. There's that group. And then there's the other group, which is the hyper, I hate you, Chris Roberts, I hate Star Citizen, I hate everybody, but I can't go a day without getting on these forums or on Reddit group. And they, if you say anything that says, you know, I really like this part, or I really like, you know, Lyria, or I really like landing at Lorville, and look at this beautiful sunset. So yeah, I'm like, oh yeah, well, it took nine years for Chris Roberts to make a sunset on a planet. Great job. Maybe we'll have a whole game in another 50. You know, those people. So a lot of people, when they kind of come to the forums, they kind of get hammered by those two groups and the developers as well. And it can get tiring and it can get boring and something like you're just like, Fuck, I don't want to put up with this shit. And that's kind of why I don't really go on the forums at all anymore. I mean, <laughs> I remember one instance where there was a player who was watching somebody um, complain about a change to, a change to a ship. And he was sitting there calling this person entitled, calling them, you know, like, who the hell do you think you are to try to tell CIG that they shouldn't do this to your ship and blah, blah, blah. That's the nature of game development. You know, all the justifications. You know, you've heard them a, a hundred times before. A year later, that same guy was just livid, screaming and yelling in the forums because... CIG upsized his Carrick and then downsized it again. That same guy, I recognized him and I went, wow. Now the shoe's on the other foot and look who's, look who's mad, you know? So it's probably why you don't see the devs and it's probably why you don't see a fair portion of the community uh, in the Star Citizen forum, specifically in the Ask the Devs part. But yeah, there are a lot of members of the community who will try to definitely answer your question but there are other people out there who who keep most people away anyways that's the episode for today i hope you guys enjoyed it and thanks for watching thank you thank you, thank you for watching so, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the star citizen and squadron 42's development please follow please follow please follow us on our social media channels see you soon